This is why this stinking criminal corporation of a government has hidden it. Because they do not want us to know our rights. There is no other explanation for it. Because they have used them to lock us in our homes. They have used them to create curfews. All kinds of utter rubbish. Not one person in this country has been issued a control order. Therefore, the powers of quarantine have been used arbitrarily and disproportionately. Unfortunately, they've been using our police as puppets. Now, I will say, if there is anybody here that incites any kind of violence, aggression or abuse, you're not a part of this movement. Our police are here to look after us and we want them on our side. Removing puppets is going to do nothing. This stupid chance. Sack Daniel Andrews. That means nothing, they're laughing. They'll just replace you with another puppet. Freedom, we are free, stand up and own it. Do not comply to this shit. They cannot restrict or prohibit our movement. They can It's a huge commitment. It's unbelievable. It just shows the resolve of this movement. And we are, we are committed to stamping out this tyranny. Australia is not gonna fall down. So, good on you guys, and you're sending a really clear message to the government. We are gonna keep going, we're not going away. Those people in there represent the lying, corrupt people out there who have sold their souls. They are a true representation of the people of Australia who have given up and given in to corruption and lies. When they lie, they say, oh, well, what are you going to do? When they are corrupt, they say, oh, well, we've got a good. And they put up with the crap. And that's why we end up with crap in our house. Because we allow the crap to exist. That's right. We, us people here, they look at us and they say, oh, look at these pathetic weak people well guess what we're not the weak ones they're the weak ones they're the weak ones who unfortunately and i'm not putting them down they are weak they're scared we they are being bullied by evil people and we are the people that stand up for them and stand up to the bullies to protect them, to protect our brothers and sisters, our mums and dads, our children, our cousins, our family. We are the protectors. Unfortunately, <laughs> this is our duty to stand up to these bullies. Because that thing there, those people in there, they're not a government. They take their orders not from the people up, they take it from the corrupt corporations and, and billionaires and trillionaires, whatever you call them, globalists, down. That's where they are. So they, they and someone said it yesterday, they're not a government, they're a criminal organisation. That's what they are. And they're not representing us, they're gaslighting us. I really love that word. They're gaslighting all of us. So people ask, why do we protest? What are you doing? How are you going to win this? And it's not clear. We ask ourselves sometimes, how are we going to win this? Why aren't there more people here? Well, we are going to win this because not everybody can come out and protest and do what we're doing. There are millions of people, billions and millions of people around the world who just need to be informed. And we, by doing this, we are spreading the word of courage, of the truth, and the movement, the, the narrative is crumbling, and we are winning. We are absolutely winning. Now, we can't claim the victory when it happens, because the victory will come through people that came before us. There are laws, and there's ways of life that people gave their life for, to get rid of slavery, to get rid of oppression, and they've written them down and they've carved them out in stone. And those laws still exist. And 
we are going to rely on those laws and we are going to use those laws to put these bastards in prison. So what we need to do is keep fighting and encourage those weak people, and I, I mean that with respect, our brothers and sisters, to jump on board. Read the laws, do the research, we're going to win this. We've got to keep these corrupt bastards on us, we're going to get, get rid of the rot and put some good people in there. Now to help us do that, we've got Jackie Dundee who will go on and on and on about the Constitution. <laughs> but she's right. And here she is, give her a big round of applause. Thank you, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Australians, firstly I wish to honour and show my respect to my forefathers, our forefathers, who sacrificed their lives for our freedoms. I also wish to show my respect to our First Nations people and always utmost respect for all of our veterans who have put their lives on the lines for this country as well. Now I'm going to run over some bare bones basics here. The Constitution is the supreme law of this land. Now pursuant to Clause 5 of the Constitution, all courts, all judges, all people of the Commonwealth and all people of the states, notwithstanding anything in the laws of any states, are bound by the Constitution. The Constitution is indissolvable. And just because this government has hidden it from the Australian people for approximately 50 years, does not mean it does not exist. There is a lot of misinformation regarding the 1973 Constitution has re wrecked it all. Look, I've got a digital version, the 2012 digital version of the Constitution. All our protections, all our guarantees are still contained within the Constitution. This is why this stinking criminal corporation of a government has hidden it, because they do not want us to know our rights. Now, I give the analogy, I lived in West Virginia for a couple of years back in the... Uh, it would have been the late 80s. Now, at that time, it was the second poorest state in America and 98% of them were illiterate. If any shit went down, they could stand there and say, I've got constitutional rights and protections. They did not need to be able to recite or know one section, but they stood strong in the knowledge that their constitution protects them. Now, our Constitution is based on the US Constitution. Our Clause 5 is their Article 6.2. Our Chapter 3 is basically their Article 3. The drafters of our Constitution based it very closely on the American Constitution, but guess what? Ours is more powerful and it provides us more protection. This government, any law they make pursuant to section 51 of the Constitution, any law the Commonwealth Government makes is subject to the Constitution. It's the same with all state laws and acts. They are subject to the Constitution. Now, just because we have Governor Generals, Attorneys Generals and all of these assholes in government that are not adhering to the Constitution and are passing unconstitutional acts, this does not mean that the Constitution doesn't exist. And constitutional rule is by the will of the people. It was put in place to grow organically with us. The hierarchy is, it is under the blessing of Almighty God our Constitution was put in place. We, the people, are next. The Constitution sits below us to protect us from tyranny and the government are on the lowest level. They are our public servants and they are there to adhere to our will. We have got to flip everything. And I will always reiterate, 
We are the ones that are lawful. So everything we do must be in the right frequency, in light, in love, in peace, and lawfully, we will get this country back. Now, I'll give you some classic examples. The way these state health acts have been used across this country, what you've got to look at with an act is its intent and purpose. And then you've got to look at its practical operation. These state acts have been used under the powers of quarantine. There is no other explanation for it because they have used them to lock us in our homes. They have used them to create curfews, all kinds of utter rubbish. Now, there are only three police powers that exist to restrict or prohibit our movement. One is if you have committed a crime. The second is if you are suffering under a mental illness and may cause harm to yourself or others. And the third is the power of quarantine. All three of these police powers require facts in evidence. You cannot arbitrarily or disproportionately use the powers of quarantine. Quarantine powers are highly restrained and constricted. It is only if you are labouring or showing signs or symptoms of a contagious infectious disease that you can be quarantined. Now there is a federal act that covers that, it is the Biosecurity Act. Federal acts sit above, they are superior to these inferior state acts. Under the Biosecurity Act, you would have had a control order issued against you personally if you are required to quarantine. It would state the disease, the length of time and all your details. Not one person in this country has been issued a control order. Therefore, the powers of quarantine have been used arbitrarily and disproportionately. We have not committed any crime. We're not suffering under a mental illness. What other purpose, what other reason was there for them to lock us in their houses? They were using the powers of quarantine. They don't want to admit it, but we'll get them to in the courts. Now, the other way they have used these health acts in their practical operation. Now, this was a collusion between the Commonwealth and the state governments, how they could force upon people. And there is high case law precedents that have been set showing you cannot persecute somebody for declining something they may lawfully decline. You cannot force any medical service or preventative upon anybody. It substitutes as trespass upon the body, abuse and assault. So the, the other way they have used these in their practical operation, these state health acts, they have actually used them as industrial relations laws. The federal act that is king, that governs the employee-employer relationship is the Fair Work Act 2009. This act has expressly written in it, so this is where we're bringing into the courts of section 109. There is an inconsistency here with a federal act and a state act. Section 109, when a law of the state is inconsistent with the law of the Commonwealth, the latter shall prevail, and the former to the extent of the inconsistency is invalid. When the courts look at indirect inconsistencies, think of it this way. It is something that is expressly written within the act, where the Commonwealth have clearly evinced their intention to cover the field on that subject matter. So the employee-employer relationship under the Fair Work Act 2009 at section 26, they have clearly evinced their intention. They have expressly written in this comprehensive act that this act is to the exclusion of any state or territory industrial law. 
Section 26 goes further. It even goes to show you what would be classed as an industrial relations law, a state or territory industrial relations law. That is any state law that is trying to regulate the workplace relationship, is trying to put conditions in place, etc. It is exactly how these state health acts have been used. And I am still absolutely gobsmacked that these corporations and employers went along with this. They were threatened with hundreds and thousands of dollars in fines if they did not enforce upon their employees. It is absolutely unlawful. This government is not adhering to constitution, the supreme law of this land. They're not adhering to their own federal acts or state acts. And it's up to we, the people, to stand up. We are living in a lawless country. Unfortunately, they've been using our police as puppets. Now, I will say, I usually start, well, used to start the protests off like this or our gatherings. If there is anybody here that incites any kind of violence, aggression or abuse, you're not a part of this movement. Our police are here to look after us and we want them on our side. So we are all here in peace, in love and light and lawfully. We have got to stand up for the sake of our children. Now, I've just been handed this as an example of some of the measures they're putting in place. We're all awake here. The entire purpose was to harvest our DNA. This is all about getting our genes. That's what it's all about. It does go down a very deep hole. Look at CERN, they're also trying to find the uh, God gene particle. This goes very, very deep. And we are in a spiritual war. So we must remain in the light in the name of our almighty God, our divine energy. We must, because there is too much satanic bullshit going on. Apparently the Herald Sun even did an article saying Victoria is known for the satanic rituals that are occurring here. So I'm not going to go down that track. I'm going to read you out some of the bills they are trying to pass here. If we deviate from a defined path or track, there's a fine up to $924. Well, this is a joke. If we engage in sport or a recreational activity without a permit, we're going to get fined up to $1,849. Are you kidding? If you go swimming without a permit, once again, you're going to get a fine of $1,849. Organising a group of 30 or more to visit, which would include schools without a permit, again, a $1,849 fine. Collecting firewood for personal home use a $3,698 fine. What the hell? This is all about control and utter control. Our taxpayers' dollars paid for all this surveillance. We do not want surveillance. We do not need to be surveyed. All of this shit should be ripped down to joke. Absolute control. What the hell is interfering with a rock? What does that mean? Up to a $3,698 fine. I don't even know what that means. Filling a chainsaw with oil or petrol on grass. Fine up to $1,840. Fishing, $2,000. Look, they are trying to make laws so we cannot be self-sufficient. We cannot help ourselves out as community. And this is a very important thing that we need to recognise. We are at war. Are. This government has declared war on the people. They are trying to take away any ability to self-sustain us. They are passing laws where we can't grow our own vegetables. They are passing laws where if you are a hunter or a butcher, you're going to get fined if you dare to share some of that meat with your friends or family. They are passing laws if you gift a friend or family member, Joe Blow, $10,000, they're going to fine you 10, 000, sorry, 2000 
and the recipient. They're trying to tell us what we can do with our money. They are trying to control every aspect of our lives. Now, none of this can be done. It is all absolutely unconstitutional. And that's been the thing that's upset me through this whole thing is we have had so much distraction. We've had so much lack of focus on the purpose and the remedy and the message that we need to get through to this corrupt corporation. And that is, we've got a constitution and we know it. And we're watching you. <laughs> Removing puppets is gonna do nothing. These stupid chants, sack Daniel Andrews. That means nothing, they're laughing. They'll just replace him with another puppet. Freedom, we are free, stand up and own it. Do not comply to this shit. They cannot restrict or prohibit our movement. They can only regulate it. There is high court case law on all of this. And I will say that all the high court cases up to date, all the decisions that have been made in nearly all of the cases, the justices, the high court justices, judges of the courts have been making the right decisions. It is simply the, the arguments, the cases that have been presented have been designed to fail. And every single one of these cases has had the media at the front ready to report and say that these restrictions have been tried in the courts and have been found not to be unconstitutional. That is a blatant lie. None of those cases determined that. Those cases determined that the arguments were incorrect. They determined that they're going in saying they're arguing under constitution. They've been told over and over and over, these lawyers, the restraint of the constitution operates upon the legislative authority, which is the act. So the acts such as the State Health Acts have been put in place. That is the authority. The chose work under them. So you must invalidate the act to question what is called the actions of executive officers, that is in legal or lawful terms, that means you are acknowledging that the act is actually valid. So they needed to have been going and challenging the validity of the acts in their practical operation. And these health acts are not only indirectly inconsistent, they are directly inconsistent because they have altered, impaired and detracted from the operation of federal acts, superior acts. They can't do it. They've done everything they can't do. We have got to stand up for the law of this land and every Australian needs to be chanting Constitution. Okay, I think I've done my time. Thanks everyone. Share the knowledge. This is about empowering everyone. I think all you Thank you, Jackie. All right, guys, we're ready to march. We've got a banner here that says freedom. Who wants to hold the freedom banner? Get up the front. Let's let's uh, organise this. Let's do it. And yes, please stay behind.